So I am appreciative of what we got to see overarching, I think coming from She Believes Cup and then going into this mm -hmm. uh, international window in, in April, uh, because while maybe there are going to be some folks who say some things defensively, you know, what, what did the team see off offensively during the attack? We saw two different starts a little bit mm -hmm. to both of these games. You know, it took uh, this group, the trio that we keep referring to specifically, <laughs> uh, nearly a half hour to kind of find mm -hmm. the back of the net in that first game. And then compared to this game tonight at Subaru Park, I mean, they were on the board within a minute. So we're talking about two completely different starts to two games against the, the same team. So there's little things I think within it that we can kind of pull out and point out. And then obviously in the bigger picture of things, we got to talk about breakout individual performances. So I'm going to hit you both with this as well. So I want to know, give me one because we can point out several, just give me one, Lisa, give me one player that you think had a really good breakout series. Okay. Just one. Well, <laughs> Uh, tricky. I'm going to go Kat Macario. So right. sorry if I stole that one from you, Lori. No worries. I appreciate it. Uh, Katarina Macario is so fun to watch. She is a tremendous player. And we saw it in the first match against Uzbekistan and the play between Smith and Pugh and Macario. And Macario being higher, not playing that false nine, but really stretching and getting into those gaps and sitting between Uzbekistan's back line and finding those pockets that she did so, so well at that. And then tonight, playing um, in front of Rose Lavelle and Ashley Sanchez, we saw something a little different from Katarina Macario, that she was able to solve those problems. Um, I mean, the set-piece goal from Katarina Macario. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm like, okay, yeah. you're subbed off. Good job tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had the pleasure of being right behind the goal when that happened, and my jaw was just drop yeah. I was like that is fantastic she also had a second one that she probably should have put away but uh we're, we're talking about the the praises Please. for Katarina Macario right now fantastic job by her and, and I think we saw growth from the first match until the second match and I'm also sad because we don't I don't personally get to watch her play week in and week out with Leon as we get to watch the NWSL players as much but this is a very special player in Katarina Macario. Um, Lori, I know I'm, I sure I took all of your points on Macario. No, no, no. I, I appreciate that. I mean, listen, we're both <laughs> crazy. And I, I, yeah. I, I back that up. And, you know, I think even just like looking at you specifically talking about the, the set pieces, just the, her approach in the way that she's like taking the free kicks, there's just something about her that is, we we haven't seen right it's like, like swagger I, times a hundred yeah and I just yeah confidence to step up and just like oh yeah this is this is the cat that everybody has been kind of waiting for because mm -hmm. it's taken you know you could say almost a year to see some of these things and granted she's young she needed some um some finding the best position and seems like she's she's really finding it in this this group um that she's playing along and gets it too my player well, I'm having a hard time deciding between Sanchez and Mal Pugh, and I think I'm going to lean towards a little bit more of Mal Pugh, even though I wouldn't say it's a breakout performance, but I think this is the best soccer that we've seen Mal Pugh um, ever play. I, I think there was an interesting, interesting time for her early on when she was carefree and there was like, you know, a lot of people yeah. like super excited and she was super, super young, blasts onto the scene, goes to the um, 2019 World Cup and, you know, not a lot of expectations. And then we saw several injuries, right? I think some mental health stuff, yeah. um, rightfully so, mixed in there as well. And, and now, I mean we're seeing it it seems like she's having fun it seems mm -hmm. like the, i mean she glides she glides i've uh, she glides around the field um i think the decisions she's making um her it seems again the willingness to like be like i'm fine i'll take players on her you know yes. the decision making that she's she makes out there and it's not just about scoring goals it's about finding um her teammates setting her teammates up so there seems to be an evolution of her game as well and and like yeah i really appreciate like her approach she seems calm you know she seems calm and in, in like on and off the field you might know better on all of this sandra being in in chicago um mm -hmm. but that's that's what it seems in chicago that's so what it yeah. seems like with the national team and awesome for her because there has been some ups and downs that we all have known 
Yeah. I mean, so many great players. Sandra, I want to know you. You. Yeah. These games. I mean, who stood out listen. to you, and and which players have you seen in both games throughout this series really be a impact player? Listen, I'm. I love both those answers. I think you look at a player like Macario, and you look at a player like Pew, and you just sort of see their ability to impact a game. I'm pretty sure they combined for near <laughs> double digits. They had to combine 18 for, goals. <laughs> well, I mean, just these two players specifically, you know, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. maybe, you know, maybe six, seven, you know, we'll have to go back and, and run yeah. the, the, the numbers of course, but these two players uh, specifically also stood out t- to me is as well. And, and just to piggyback off of Lori's comment on, on Pew, we're, we're seeing like that continued development. I think we're maybe starting to connect those dots a little bit mm-hmm. for folks who are watching this team in this particular pool of players with what Adonofsky has been talking about in terms of trying to see more from, from certain players and seeing their, de- their continued development. And we're seeing that out of somebody like Amal Pew, mm-hmm. who's finally coming off of her first full regular season with Chicago Red Stars in NWSL. And it's, crazy to sort of think that this is a you know a player who's 23 years old and is uh, with her third NWSL club and making these strides at this age is that the people I think forget that she was very young when she was starting getting calls up call ups to the senior level national teams and then making the jump to go pro uh you know with with the spirit and then that very brief trade to uh <laughs> to formerly sky blue and then and then now Chicago. Yeah. so it's like you Several had teams, in, and then like the you mentioned like these injuries that came into play that hindered her time with uh the washington spirit and this was a, a spirit team that had rose lavelle andy sullivan you know the time uh and then we're starting to see that you know she learned what it was like to go through the long grind of a season but not only that really kind of be like the the face of a team, a central yes. focal person. And you can see that a lot uh, in her club play that uh, she has. Yes. She's, she's showing everybody what she could do on the pitch tactically and in front of goal in terms of a striker mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, but her evolution is sort of like a, uh, an on the pitch kind of leader. Um, someone who isn't afraid to kind of command a little bit more from yeah. her teammates or direct traffic. Uh, we're seeing that a lot more maybe on the, on the club level than, than perhaps the national team level, because it's a, it's a different beast when you're comparing uh, NWSL yeah. to the international stage. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and the um, fact that she is so young and what, what was one of the stats tonight is Mallory Pugh getting the start 23 years yeah. old and the most caps or something like that. Yeah. Or crazy <laughs> stat Out of the group of the starting yeah. 11 group that was on that. that. <laughs> fantastic. I mean, that is so tremendous that they can have a 23 year old with the yeah. most caps in the starting 11. I also want to give a shout out to Rose Lavelle uh, because oh, yeah. this is another player that I think did really well throughout this yeah. series. I think tonight, she played a little better. Um, honestly, yeah. I really liked her alongside Ashley Sanchez. I really, yeah. really liked that pairing. I think Rose Lavelle um, did well tonight to command the midfield. And, and she's yeah. been so lethal on the ball with her vision and, and popping into those pockets and running at defenders and then feeding it off to Macario and Pew up top. There's, It was really yeah. fun to watch Rose. Well, I'm with you 100%. I just, I just feel like, but we also know that about yes. Rose Lavelle, right? It's like, it's not, we're not looking at Rose Lavelle over you know, the 2022 She Believes Cup and then these two games against Uzbekistan and saying like, this is a player who had a breakout, you know, kind of performance. It's like, we we sort of know like who Roosevelt is and what she's capable of. You especially, Lisa. I mean, you know, you saw yeah. her in college days, you know, so I'm looking at... I'm looking me at every the, time. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the Macarios. I was looking at the the Malpews a little bit. I was also looking at Sophia Smith. Mm-hmm. I think like she's coming, she's walking away out of w- these two games with, with a hat trick um, against Uzbekistan. And I know there's been this conversation about this. This is the young player who has to, who's, who's very dynamic on the ball, but has to sort of maybe learn how to finish. And we're seeing that in the challenge up. And now we're seeing that on the uh, national team stage, but I also love defense. I was happy to see Naomi Germa get a start mm-hmm. alongside Alana Cook. And I'm going to maybe circle Alana Cook for maybe my defender to sort of have a breakout performance. All of a sudden, she kind of found herself in the spotlight a little bit over mm-hmm. these last two games, uh, sort of seeing somebody like a Tierna Davidson now out for 2022 and having somebody like Abby Dahlkemper with more caps defensively for this national team, but still kind of working her way back into form on the national team level. And all of a sudden you had Alana Cook 
being tasked with the responsibility of kind of leading a yeah. back line. And mm-hmm. we saw her do that over these two games. And we also saw her getting involved on set pieces and in the attack. So I really liked these two games from Alana Cook as well. So there, I think there's a ton of players that you can look across this 23 and say that a number of them might have had some breakout games. But I like the ones that were kind of centered in now, whether it's a Macario, a Sanchez, a Pew, you know, or or a Cook. 